Flight 175, pictured here, is central to the 9-11 story. The story goes that it was hijacked, descended rapidly and was deliberately crashed into the World Trade Center. In the same way as many people do not believe a plane hit the Pentagon, many pilots do not believe that Flight 175 could have descended 24,000 feet in 4 minutes 40 seconds. This is reconstruction of that descent. Fasten your seatbelts sentient beings. The first thing we need to reconstruct this dive is to get our hands on the most realistic and detailed wide-body large jet simulation available. The 747 and 767 share almost identical flight envelopes and very similar V speeds. This product is officially licensed by the Boeing company. The official story of Flight 175 is here, at the National Security Archive website. In August 2006, the National Transportation Safety Board released flight plan studies for three of the aircraft supposedly used in the 9-11 attacks. We will be using the radar data from this NTSB report to reconstruct Flight 175. According to the report, the aircraft takes off at point A, Boston Airport, and flies along its assigned flight path until point F. Here it turns left and descends to point G. This point is where this reconstruction will begin from. The four letter codes, in red, with the letter K at the beginning, are all airports. The NTSB report also gives us the time each point is reached, at the bottom of this chart, and the altitude for each point on the left of the chart. Here we are at point F, at 31,000 feet just before the aircraft is supposed to have deviated. Point F is on a track of 51 between waypoints Elliot and Suicide. The aircraft in the display is represented by the white triangle. The airports are the same as in the NTSB report, here, in blue writing. We will use this airport K, W, R, I, to position the aircraft airports K, A, B, E, and K, W, R, I, and K, E, W, R, form a triangle. We will be able to position our aircraft in the simulation with great accuracy by positioning it in exact relationship to these airports. K E W R is just beside the World Trade Center. To simulate the aircraft's descent, we need the exact rate of descent. We know that from point G to impact is 4 minutes, 40 seconds, so by drawing simple lines plotting each minute after point G against altitude, we get the rate of descent in feet per minute, as shown. Here we are at point G, with the simulation paused, the aircraft has already descended from 31,000 feet at point F, and we are now at 24,700 feet. Follow the mouse, here are the three airports which form a triangle like in the NTSB report, and their relative position to the nose of the plane. If we superimpose the NTSB report over the aircraft display, you can see we are now at point G, this point is 42 miles away from the World Trade Center. 42 miles in 4 minutes 40 seconds is a ground speed of 540 miles an hour. We must keep this ground speed up all the way down to hit the tower's power speed indicator. On the left, indicates a speed of 327 knots, which is a ground speed of 464 knots, shown here as GS, in the top left corner of the display, which is a ground speed of 533 miles per hour. Okay, let's rock and roll. In the first minute after point G, the aircraft descends at a rate of 3,600 feet per minute. To see exactly what is going on with the aircraft's displays, I will now shift to the virtual cockpit view and record the descent in one continuous stream. On the left of the display is the speed indicator, and this big red line here at 360 knots is the absolute maximum, safe, speed for this aircraft to travel. On the right of the display is the rate of descent indicator, you can see it is at 3,600 feet per minute right now, and above it, the altitude indicator showing we are descending rapidly. On our display which shows our position, you can see the airport K, E, W, R, getting closer, the World Trade Center is just to the right and a little bit ahead of this airport, as shown in the NTSB report. To get the rate of descent exact, I am using the autopilot to control the vertical speed. In the second minute after point G, the plane descends at a rate of 3,100 feet per minute. Weather conditions play an important role in the performance of any aircraft. 9-11 was a clear day with very little wind, so this simulation is weather neutral. For example, there was no huge tailwind pushing the aircraft along and increasing its ground speed. As you can see, we are now at 20,300 feet and approaching 350 knots. 350 knots is the maximum safe speed for a 767 aircraft, so at this point, just under 20,000 feet, a 767 would overspeed. We are in a 747, which has a higher maximum speed and still have another 10 knots to go before overspeed. 
The problem is this, when an aircraft overspeeds, which it can, when put into a dive, its structural integrity is not guaranteed. We will look at the consequences of going over speed after this reconstruction. Technically, a jet should not travel over 250 knots under 10,000 feet, because its wind, shield would break, if hit by a bird. We are still over 20 miles from the World Trade Center. In the third minute after point, G, the aircraft descends at a rate of 5,000 feet per minute, this is a very high rate of descent. This aircraft, a 747, has been within its safe flight envelope up to this point, but immediately, with this high rate of descent, hits the red line and goes over its maximum safe speed. Going over this red line in an aircraft is like walking into the valley of death, sorry, flying into the valley of death. As the speed increases the force placed on the airframe is above what it was designed to take. Just as a person cannot walk as fast through water as through air, a plane has a much lower ground speed near or sea level, because the air is so much denser. This is why many people appear to be confused about indicated air speed and ground speed. This needs another video to explain the difference, but, very briefly, at point F, earlier, we were traveling at 320 knots which at 31,000 feet gave us a ground speed of 577 miles per hour. 320 knots at sea level is a ground speed of just 366 miles per hour. In the fourth minute after point, G, the aircraft is supposed to have descended at a rate of 6,000 feet per minute. With the engines running at only 46% thrust, we have increased our speed mainly through the pull of gravity. At this point, the structural integrity of the airframe is compromised. We are still approximately 15 miles from the World Trade Center and 12,000 feet up in the air. A 767 would have broken up at a higher altitude, based on its lower maximum speed. In every aircraft, large or small, there is a big red line on the speed indicator, E, N, E, which stands for velocity, never, exceed. Aircraft manufacturers use the word, never, for good reason. Aircraft operators specify a never exceed speed, because of, flutter. F-L-U-T-T-E-R, flutter, as a phenomenon of flight engineering, means a vibration that can amplify and do structural damage. Aircraft manufacturers, when testing their aircraft, bring up the speed slowly and in tiny increments. They are testing for flutter. Watch. In the slow XL-85. Terminate. Terminate. Knock it off. We lost it. We lost the tip. In this simulation, the aircraft exceeds its never exceed velocity when it is still nearly 17,000 feet up in the air. Once it goes above this speed, its airframe is not certified. The aircraft breaks up at 12,000 feet. Remember, a 767 would have broken up at an even higher altitude. This unfortunate plane is what it might have looked like. While researching this reconstruction I came across something amazing. The official story of Flight 175 as told by the NTSB report completely contradicts the television footage we were shown of the event. According to their radar, Flight 175 descends an amazing 6,300 feet in the last 40 seconds. According to the radar, the aircraft does not level off, I repeat does not level off in any way. 6,300 feet in the last 40 seconds, 157 feet per second, 785 feet in the last 5 seconds, over half the height of the World Trade Center in the last 5 seconds. According to the NTSB report, all video of aircraft flying level into the World Trade Center must be fake. According to the NTSB report this is fake. According to the NTSB report, this is fake. To, to have carried out these attacks. According to the NTSB report, this footage shown by the BBC is fake. One mighty me. Um, the point. According to the NTSB report, this is fake. And that's the. According to the NTSB report, this is fake. Jim Friedel in Hoboken uh, said it appeared. According to the NTSB report, this footage shown by Fox News is fake. Purposefully. According to the NTSB report, this is fake. In a second, that looks like a... Amazingly, there are other television shots which show a plane hitting the tower in a steep dive, like in the NTSB report, but this footage contradicts the other level flight footage. As a jetliner flies right into the second Trade Center tower. In Sarasota, Florida, President Bush calls the crashes an apparent terrorist attack and a national... Fair is foul, and foul is fair.